Ah, peace and greetings to you. This is PA Omar Abdul Malik, also known as Dr. O, the PA Pro. Let's see. It's about midnight, Wednesday. At the timing of this video, it is, what is this? This is July 27th. So I, I wanted to go over a book. I hadn't done a book review in a while. So um, there's one in particular that I've, I've just really wanted to, to show you all. And that is the, the current medical diagnosis and treatment. This is the 2016 version. Um, I think I've shown you all uh, some of the other versions I've had. I really like this book um, because it takes you through internal medicine and it's adult internal medicine so there's no there's no pediatrics here um, it's specifically internal medicine for the most part uh, there's really not any OBGYN or anything of that sort in here it's divided pages total it's excluding the index it's about 1700 pages and it is comprised of 42 chapters and the um, first chapter is the disease prevention and health promotion the last chapter is women's health issues and then it takes you between those are um, different diseases so it it deals with different specialties so it'll do geriatric disorders uh, dermatologic disorders. Here's the table of contents. Uh, if you can see that there. Okay. And it's got some really good tables in it and pictures for like the dermat. I don't want to show you that. <laughs> for the dermat term dermatological disorders. Um, here's here's like the picture. I don't think they had. I don't think they were using um, in their prior books. I don't know if they used, if they gave you um, uh, pictures in color. So this was a nice surprise. You know, and it's, it's very good quality pictures. There's always there's also good tables in here. Let me get a table from one of the. Here's a table like this, table 15, 18. This is causes of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. I don't know if you can see that or not. Ah. But, you know, I, I find table, for me, tables and pictures are good, are things that kind of uh, solidify certain information for me. It uh, makes it easier for me to, um, to remember and then there's also algorithms for certain diseases. Now, this book, I would say, is the, the content is pretty straightforward. Um, it, it doesn't get into, it's not advanced research. It's, it's very good if you are somebody that's, maybe you're studying, you're a nurse and you're studying for your NCLEX, your PA and you're studying for your, your pants or your panry. Uh, if you are a doctor and you, you're studying for your USMLE, I think step one and step two. Or if you just want to review, if you're like me, yeah, I've already taken my, took my panry a couple of years ago, but I like to review just on management. And that's, that's really what this book deals with. You're not going to necessarily learn anything that, that new that you did not learn in school. Um, it, if you had... Um, pathophysiology with um, I think Robbins is like the, the Bible of, of pathophysiology. Um, Bates is 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 um, probably the standard bearer for for um, physical diagnosis. Those those the information that that you got from school. It's kind of um, this is kind of the this current book is kind of the the culmination of that. I don't think it's a good book for students who are in their first year of school, that being nursing, physician assistant, or, or, or even medicine, because you, you haven't had quite enough medicine yet to really understand um, 
what's what's the you know the content of this book and you're not going to have time either <laughs> in conjunction with this book there is also a there's a study guide and you know I bought there's there's also a flashcards here I went and bought the study I bought the study guide and the flashcards the study guide is not what I thought it was it's it's really more it's a series of case studies and it is how many case studies? It's about 500 pages. So it has it has about almost 80 case studies in it. And the case studies are short. So it doesn't have, it's not like a, a, a test question booklet. So here's case study, a case study on hypertension. I'll read this real quick. So a 56-year-old black man presents to the clinic for a routine physical examination. On arrival, he is noted to have blood pressure of 160 over 90 millimeters of mercury, which you verify after he has sat for 20 minutes in the exam room. You look back in his records and see that during his last two visits, he has had blood pressures of 154 over 91 and 161 over 89. He denies any symptoms. He also denies any recent caffeine or other stimulant use. So then it takes you through the learning objectives, like learn the classification and clinical manifestations of hypertension, um, learn the treatments for hypertension, and then questions. It's challenging you, the author's challenging you how to think like a clinician. What are the salient features of this patient's problems? How do you think through his problems? Um, what are the treatments for hypertension? Then it'll take you through, let's see, kind of answer the questions for you. So there's no wrong or right answers on here, like you would in, a, uh, in a, uh, another type of question book. Um, it has the uh, classification and management of blood pressure. And th this, this is based on the JNC, the Joint National Committee, seven guidelines. Um, the, the joint seven, um, JNC eight has been out for a couple of years. And I should say, in a, as an aside, for any, the caveat I would offer for any, when you're reading any medical textbook in particular, or any, any textbook, but a, a medical textbook in particular, the information may be antiquated as soon as you open the book, because it's based on on um, information that is at least a year old. You know, by the time the, the, um, the authors put the information together, it goes to publishing, you know, and the book is actually printed, printed out. The information is old. And I, I say that as somebody who's actually published research, you know, it, by the time I finished my book, I had to go back and add information um, because, uh, some of the information I had in there was antiquated. But this is a good, again, this is, I think this is a good book to have in conjunction with this book. If you just want to get used to thinking like a clinician, um, you, you have to, you, you have to be familiar with certain concepts. Like um, here, it talks about um, primary hypertension. Secondary hypertension. Where is it? Here. I don't know if you can see that. You know, what type of labs we, would you order? And here again, it's got uh, algorithms in it. I'll tell you all about my fondness for, for algorithms. Then a bunch of different medications that you would order for somebody with hypertension. Um, those you have. I would memorize those, but you, you should be familiar with the different classifications of antihypertensives. I treat people with hypertension literally every day I'm at work. Uh, so if you want to get this, I would, I would suggest buying it. It's, it's about $130 for the whole series. I would not suggest you get the flashcards. You know, they're, they're, they're messy. What are you going to do if you, if you drop them? <laughs> but, um, you know... You can also get the uh, get it. Um, you can download it as well. But I hope this helped. I'll come at you all with some more videos in the future. God willing. Peace.